So I'm Richard Taylor and I'm here at the Barnwell Baptist Church for a local liaison forum organised by the Greater Cambridge City Deal Organisation, now called the Greater Cambridge Partnership. It's going to be discussing the Chisholm Trail from Coldham's Common um, through to the new bridge over the River Cam and on to the new Cambridge North Station. So the new bridge is going to land just up here behind me. There's then going to be a triangular ramp um, bringing cyclists down onto the hailing way. Now I've suggested that we need to consider how that ramp is going to behave in the ice and, um, and, and in, in wintry conditions. So in particular I want councillors to be considering if they can put some electric heating underneath like we've got on one of the bridges um, near Cambridge Station, look at the surfacing they're using and also consider putting a railing next to the river so that if people do lose control on their way down the ramp um, they won't necessarily fall um, in the river or to reduce the amount of people who will um, fall in the river. I actually suggested that uh, what we should have is a straight and level cycle route on the other side of the railway bridge cutting across through the houses and straight um, to the new Cambridge North Station. As it is, um, cyclists are going to have to come around this new triangular loop here, onto the hailing way, and then um, down to um, and then down to, to the new station. So that route will then um, come along here. And something that I've been asking is um, if we're going to maintain this lovely um, green grass verge, um, the grass bank here, um, because some of the plans that um, went to the County Council, some of the uh, plans as part of the planning application, uh, did show that this grass um, bank would be lost and replaced with a concrete sharp edge. So through here, we've got a gateway, which is obviously going to be uh, replaced and opened up. So, so this path here will be um, made more accessible to cyclists. And something which we need already, actually, is an improvement in the signage on this road. So I'd like to see um, indications to vehicles here that this is a, a major cycleway coming out. And of course, we need some road signs. There should be signs here telling me how to get to um, North Cambridge Station, which is just over here to, um, to the right. I think given that this is now going to be a really important cycleway, we also need to um, improve the road surfacing. There are a lot of pretty bad potholes on this road, um, which, um, which need fixing. What we've got here is, as on Milton Road, we've got temporary signage to the new station still. So there's no signage for, um, for cyclists in particular who would be using this route um, into the station um, to show people where to go. We've got temporary signage, temporary signage there on the other side of the road as well. So I'm here at the new North Cambridge station um, on the path through to Moss Bank. Um, I've come this evening to film, live tweet, report on what's going on. Um, I don't really know what to expect. There's a planning application in for um, the Chisholm Trail across Coldham's Common and across to the new bridge. Um, that's going to be decided by councillors next week. Um, and um, the new bridge already has permission. So anyway, hopefully it's just a chance to ask some questions um, and find out the latest on the two projects. There are some people are concerned about exactly um, what's the ownership status of Coldham's Common. I think it's probably pretty clearly the City Council, but there are people querying that. There are people querying the quality of the environmental assessments on um, Coldham's Common and um, on um, Ditton Meadows. So it would be great to, to hear a little bit more about that. I actually think that um, there's a, the opportunity, particularly by the River Cam, by the new bridge, to improve things environmentally uh, as we get some new trees planted, we get um, some, some new ponds and we get sort of the area um, sort of cleaned up a bit as well because actually currently the stream's often rather full of, full of rubbish. I would like to see a lot more detail on some of the plans. Some of the, the planning application documents aren't as detailed as they would be for a new development of homes for example. Um, I can't quite get to grips to the level that I'd like to with the detail of the underpass under Newmarket Road by the Leper Chapel. Um, maybe tonight's meeting will, will help, me, help me do that. We might have some more um, information presented here. So. Um, lots of things that um, we, we, we might find out tonight. Um, this meeting is absolutely abysmally administrated. Um, the agenda was only published earlier today. It's very scant, doesn't really tell us what's going on. There are no papers, no reports, um, no minutes of the last meeting on the agenda to be considered. Um, they haven't even got a list of who they're expecting to turn up and be uh, members of the panel tonight, um, either on the agenda or um, in the associated paperwork. So it'll be interesting to see, um, to see who's here and um, whether it's a uh, a useful meeting tonight. It should be a meeting um, to which many of the local councillors from the Cambridge City and um, South Cambridge District Council as well as um, some county councillors who are both local councillors and who have got roles on the relevant um, committee um, sh should be on the panel here tonight. So it could be quite formative and interesting. Anyway, I'm going to go in and uh, see what happens. Hi everyone, um, we're going to make a start. Uh, I'm actually vice 
so I'm Ian Manning, I'm the County Councillor for the new Chesterton Division. Um, I'm actually the Vice Chair of this uh, forum, so I'm just standing in front of the cabinet who's normally chair it, but isn't here tonight. I'm sure he's got uh, probably a degree by his team, I imagine, possibly. But anyway, um, we're going to keep this relatively informal because this is essentially just an update on the project from Patrick, who's the project manager. Um, it's probably just worth highlighting there are a couple of other councillors here. Uh, we'll quickly introduce yes, yes, hi, I'm Richard Johnson. Um, I've been councillor for, um, for the city, representing the city council. <laughs> May as well. Hazel, <laughs> right, I'm Hazel Smith from uh, Milton Parish Council and South Cams. And I'm Mark and representing Milton Parish Council. Uh, so, and we'll keep those really formal, so perhaps we'll give this presentation, then we'll have some questions and then um, questions afterwards. So. I'll just say there's some water at the back of folk on it and oh, yeah. the loser of where it lives. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, if yeah. yeah. people want what I'm expecting. So I think you can get to the fire exits over there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll start then. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm Hazel Smith, I'm um, Milton Parish Council and South Cams. Um, I'm Hazel Smith, I'm Patrick Joyce, I'm the project manager for the Chidden Trail. Um, Apologies for the sort of confused branding that's going on because <laughs> what was City Deal is now a Greater Kent partnership, and I actually haven't got all the logos and bits and pieces ready yet. So <laughs> it, some of it will say City Deal, some of it will say uh, Greater Kent partnership, some of it will say nothing at all. So um, just let's move things on. Um, today uh, I'm going to essentially recap in case there's anybody here that doesn't know what the project's about uh, and just kind of give you a, a bit of a, a run through that. I'll go through the headlines that have happened since the last meeting as I understand them uh, and then look ahead to what uh, we think is going to happen in the future uh, and the next steps. Um, so without further ado, uh, I'll sort of move on. Um, okay, just again in, uh, uh, to, to recap, this shows the Chisholm Trail uh, up here is where the new station has just been opened. Uh, down the bottom uh, is Cambridge Station, just off the map here. Um, phase one is this in red, uh, goes through here, and phase two is shown in blue. Um, if anybody doesn't know, at this point at the river, uh, the new bridge going in, uh, which is shown there. Uh, at this point here, at New Market Road, uh, there will be an underpass, and, and that's just a diagram to show uh, what, what that's about. Okay, um, the principles of, of the route then are that it is direct, which it is. Uh, it doesn't sort of deviate far from the railway axis. It's pleasant and gives improved uh, journey ambience. It's a nice, it's a nice place to, to cycle and walk. Um, it links uh, key destinations, the station uh, and the new station, but also places of employment, places where people live. Um, we consider it to be inclusive uh, and it supports folk who are disabled or less able. Um, and it, it, essentially, all users will find it a pleasant thing to use, we hope, and therefore it will be used. So that's, I mean, that's what we, we want it to be, well used, and get folk out of their cars, essentially. Uh, we want it to be safe, uh, nothing, nothing surprising there, and link green spaces. So it does that, it links Ditton Meadows, uh, Coldham's Common, but it links uh, sort of green spaces beyond then Ditton and the river, and all the way through to Sainsbury's and uh, Barnwell uh, uh, Road. So it, it, it does all those things. Okay, that sort of puts it into context. You've got this, this rather small writing here, shows you the, the kind of main trip generators. Uh, okay, so there's the, the new station, the bridge, uh, the new station, business park, science park, the busway that goes to St Ives. Um, uh, obviously, uh, Cambridge United Football Club, Marshalls, Shire Hall, those are interested. Um, this is the main railway line through here, and it follows that axis pretty well uh, without deviating too much. Um, Cambridge Station at the bottom, 
and the biomedical camps and, and Addenbrooke's at the bottom, which are again major trip generators, places of work. So it'll you know enable folk to travel from end to end or dip in and dip out according to where they live and use essentially an axis that will be free of traffic uh, and pleasant to, to use. Uh, this is an example of, of the busway, I'm sure people know, uh, well used by cyclists and pedestrians. And this shows the route across Dip Meadows, which is actually congested uh, and, and narrow. So um, improvements there uh, will you know, yield benefits for all. Uh, more of a sort of blurb. Uh, yeah, it supports growth. This is what City is about. <laughs> lots of houses coming, lots of people. Um, yeah, uh, with all these new people coming in, we want them to cycle rather than drive. The only way you encourage people to cycle is give them good provision, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, good example here. Um, you know, nice and wide. Uh, away from traffic, a green corridor, going exactly where you want to go. Uh, and so that's the kind of ethos behind what, what we're doing. So phase one, this is the bit we're building now, or about to build now. Uh, this is the bit of the north, kind of Ditton Meadows here, Savage Common, Colgan's Common here, New Market Road. Um, there's two kilometres of new route involved. Uh, Chester Abbey Bridge at this point here, new bridge. Uh, the tender process. Um, this, uh, yeah, just to say, the two major structures, the bridge and the underpass. Planning consent we got in uh, February uh, for the bridge. And we're in the process of getting, we hope, planning consent for the remainder of phase one at uh, the end of this month on the 19th. Uh, and it involves us working with Network Rail because all this stuff is right next to the railway track uh, and clearly they have a big say in what we can and can't do. Um, so the headlines then for what's happened, and I'm sort of, in a way, there's this LLF, there's less to say, there's less kind of exciting stuff to say, uh, less new stuff to introduce to you, uh, and we're, we're sort of moved into the sort of mundane part of the project where we're sort of looking at planning consent, planning conditions, ticking boxes, talking to people. But there's no sort of kind of new bridge to unveil to you particularly. But what I would say is these are the headline things that have happened. Planning consent we've had in February. The North Station, as many of you know, probably opened in, in May. Uh, the tender process, which you may not know about uh, for phase one, uh, is uh, has now been completed, uh, and that's just happened. And we now move into a, a, an ECI phase, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, on the 19th of this month, the planning decision for the Chisholm Trail will be decided upon, uh, and we're also dealing with a Commons consent application because all work in Collins Common or any Common has to go via the Secretary of State and be approved uh, by him. So let's just go through those. Um, Chesterdown Bridge. Uh, this was given in February at the Council Planning Committee. There's 32 conditions uh, that have been imposed on us, uh, which we're working through now uh, to discharge. 17 of those are pre commencement So before we do anything, we have to satisfy those conditions. And so that's kind of taking up most of our time at the moment. And that involves, uh, well, the list is there, but it's a, a lot of it's about ecology and making sure that we don't degrade the environment. Uh, there's little things like that we, we, we need to design piles for the bridge. To do that, we need to do ground investigations. And in order to do our ground investigations, we need to satisfy the environment agency by drilling through the ground. We don't pollute the aquifer beneath. So there's a lot of stuff that has to be done before you even sort of pass muster here. Um, the planners obviously will require um, details of the final design and the construction management uh, program, uh, which we can't actually give them until such time because we've got our contractor on board. So I'll come to our contractor in a minute, but when we've got our contractor on board, 
then we can discharge uh, that condition. Uh, just a little about Cambridge North Station, it's a rather ugly photo of it, like a grain elevator or something, but that was the only one I could find, it didn't seem to have copyright on it, and I didn't have one of my own. Uh, actually looks really rather nice, opened in May, trains pretty well everywhere, I think some of them you have to change, because um, they don't all stop there. Um, the links uh, from the station north on a nice new path towards the science park and beyond to the busway, so that's nice and it's well used, uh, we know that already. Uh, and to the south of the station there's a link out through Moss Bank, uh, which will eventually form the link to the, the new bridge and the rest of the Chisholm Trail. So. Okay, just to say something about the tender process, we <coughs> obviously need a contractor to build these, this thing, this project, this scheme, these two big structures. And the County Council has a framework contract, the Eastern Highways Alliance, CHA, um, which a lot of contractors have sort of uh, joined. And under this process, essentially, we go to them uh, to tender. There are six contractors involved in this process who we invited to tender for the bridge uh, and the underpass and the associated works, the jetty, the paths. And of those six, five tenders, so we know we've got a, a pretty representative uh, sample and uh, hopefully competitive. We, just the other day, so I suppose this is news, um, we got to the, to the end of the process and we have a successful tender and that is for Carillion Tarmac. Um, and they will be our contractors for the early contractor involvement ECI phase. Uh, which will start, well, essentially now, uh, by the time the, con the ink is dry on the contract, which hasn't been signed yet, so they haven't actually been appointed, but they're nearly there. Um, the successful tender was decided not only on price, so it's not necessarily the cheapest price. Uh, there's a strong element of quality involved, uh, and in fact, this tender wasn't the cheapest, but it was quite a strong bid on quality, and, and we're happy about that. And phase one is the indication is it's, it's coming in at 5.5 million. So that's for the bridge, the underpass, and all the associated works, the jetty, which is actually less than we thought. So we, we're quite pleased about that. So now begins um, a 16 week. ECI phase where we ask the contractor, we show them what we're doing, we show them the design we've got, and we say, now your building is, how are you going to do it? Uh, and they're going to come back, we hope, and tell us, well, that's all wrong, we can save you, you know, N hundred thousand pounds by doing it this way. And that is what we call the E uh, value engineering. So we're looking at different ways of constructing the bridge different ways of installing the bridge. And we've said we might like to launch it, and that's what we were looking at before. We're now thinking maybe we can lift it, and that looks like it'd be a cheaper option. Uh, and that save, like I say, save a considerable amount of money. And it would mean that you could have a lighter bridge, uh, and so saving some cost. So lifting the bridge means it doesn't have to support its own weight, so you have thinner steel, blah, 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 and it save in that way. So what does the ECI stand for? Early Contractor Involvement. All right. It's so it doesn't mean that they've got the final job. No, no. Um, what what happens? Um, what happens essentially is that we've got this 16-week period um, when they look at the designs that we've got. We've, we've done a lot of design work so far. They tell us how they want to do it, and then we value engineer it. We try and pair out the bits that are too expensive or silly or whatever or they think they could do better. And then at the end of that period, uh, they can reprice. So that figure, the 5.5 billion, they say, actually, we can do it for 4.5 if we do it this way. Or then they say. Conversely, if the figure actually ends up being greater, yeah. they could theoretically walk away. If they, well, if they, if we they can walk away, <coughs> is the point. After 16 weeks, we say, actually, we don't like your price, and we can use the design work that has been done and go to another contractor who may be cheaper because we did get cheaper quotes 
and say, perhaps you'd like to do it. So, um, it's, you know, we're not signed up to build with them, but clearly, if they've done a lot of the groundwork, if we like what they're doing, and clearly we like uh, the way they operate, or it seems we do, um, then we'd go with them. When you say lifted, yeah. would that be helicopters? No, crane. Crane. A crane. Yeah. What we had been looking at, and perhaps I should explain, if anyone, well, I gave a presentation last time to show how we might do it, is you build it on one side yeah. and you sort of shunt it across the river with a nose on, which is then supported, and then you push it the last bit, take the nose off, and it's there. So that means you avoid the crane, but it means, it, because it's hanging over the river, it has to be really quite a strong structure and therefore very heavy to support its own weight because it's only supported on one side. So a jolly great counterweight on one side and the bridge on the other. Uh, and that, that, that's the way you launch a bridge. And a lot of bridges are launched that way or, or installed that way. But it's cheaper if you can lift it, generally speaking, um, because you can have a lighter structure and it's not in tension at the top of the bridge. Uh, because the way it's supported when it's hanging from a crane. Mm -hmm. Are they also considering building it somewhere else, entirely other, somewhere away from the site? No. No. So we've got a, a th we can build it on the northern side in that triangular piece of land and some extra land we've got. Uh, I've got this together, but you can probably, you know, don't look at it too hard because we're going to throw it away. Uh, this line, so where are we? There, that's now. Okay, so all this has been done, all the consultation, all the planning work. Uh, here is the construction phase uh, and sort of handover, and that, that's for the bridge. Um, so it only gives you an idea, you know, where we're talking about finishing. Um, you know, 2018, end of. But like I say, the contractor will have their own programme, uh, and this will not be it. Uh, okay, um, so moving on then to the, the planning. Um, this is the thing that's going to be decided on the 19th, uh, at the Guildhall by the JDCC, the Joint Development Control Committee. Uh, planning application is that, if you want to look it up, on the site, but you probably don't want to because there's 217 documents. And it's going to take a very long time to go through it. Um, so some people have gone through it, I'm sure, and uh, taken it apart. Um, and it, but it contains details of all the structures, earthworks, and all the mitigation and uh, landscape and ecology, everything. It's all there. Um, we expect that, again, similarly to the bridge. We're going to get a lot of conditions placed upon us. You know, we have 32 for that. We'll probably have that and a few more besides for, for this as well. And again, we expect a lot of those to be pre-commencement. So our work is cut out for us. Uh, last point is that the having it contracted is really helpful to us because we're sort of floundering around in the dark trying to, to do this stuff, guessing how they're going to build it, and then having to uh, go to the planners and say. You know, this is how we want to discharge these conditions. Having a contractor there will help us a lot um, because they can do some of the legwork, actually. Uh, this one. <laughs> um, we go across Coldham's Common, uh, but everything you do in a common that removes grass or green space, or in fact anything, any, anything involving any structure, any particularly any fencing, you require commons consent. Uh, like I say, all spit works require secretary of state approval. And that is done by the planning inspectorate. So a form has been sent in to the planning inspectorate uh, and advertised in public so people can look at it and criticise it and send in their objections um, as they do. Um, that's, that's happened, that form's gone in. Um, with a lot of explanation, expl expl explanation to the inspector to tell him what we're doing. Um, what it includes for our two new bridges, there's two bridges over Coldham's Brook, uh, one leading to Barnwell Lake and a new path link to that, 
to the existing path, which we're widening. Um, so we're widening the existing path. We're putting, let's say, two new bridges. Uh, we cross Colmes Brook twice, essentially. And we're taking away an old culvert uh, and replacing that with a bridge, which is county policy because we're told um, bridges are more friendly for wildlife than culverts are because they can crawl through easy or something. Um, anyway, that's what's going to happen. Um, fencing is a big one for the Secretary of State uh, and, and for Commons <coughs> Consent. They don't like any fencing on common, so you temporary fencing to secure our site uh, during the works. We have to account for that. We've got to say what kind of fencing, where it's going, how long it's going to be there for, uh, you know, why we need it. Um, and what we've done is uh, we're, we're putting together a schedule of where the, the fencing will go. And what we're hoping to do is do a bit, fence a bit, leapfrog to the next bit. So it's not all fenced off the whole length at any one time. Uh, it's just the section we have to be working on and, and that's something we're actually doing uh, at the moment, we're going through that process. Uh, the consent process can take as little as I believe 16 weeks or 12 weeks, but if there's an objection it takes at least 26 weeks and that's what we've got. We've got an objection uh, and a very fulsome objection um, from the Fans of Columns Common uh, and we're going through that now and we've got to provide a rebuttal of that to the planning inspectorate and that's something that is absorbing quite a lot of our time at the moment, putting together systematically going through that and uh, refuting some of the frankly outrageous claims that are being made. Um, we do that and then we submit that to the planning inspectorate and they decide how then they want to take it forward. It may be something that has a site visit by a planning inspector who comes and looks and pronounces upon <coughs> whether what we're doing is reasonable, or it may take uh, an inquiry, which is something that we don't want to do, but that's kind of part of the legal process, so we have to be ready for that. Um, I've said objections have been received. There is an objection from French Court Common. There is also an objection in the name of FECRA, which I'm not entirely sure whether it is in the name of FECRA or in the name of the chair of FECRA, but we'll have to get to the bottom of that one. Um, uh, there have been one or two other comments that have been received, and thank you to anyone who has given their comments. Uh, very grateful for that, because we generally only get negative ones. Uh, this is a popular scheme, and so I'm very glad to see some positive comments coming our way. Um, we've had that, haven't we? We've been aware of that. Um, just in case anyone hasn't seen it, there's no, not much chance of this, you know exactly what it is. This is where the underpass goes. Um, what are the first signs you'll see on site? Well, the first signs of anything happening to the casual observer will be on the railway embankment on Dippin Meadows, where we've got to relocate network rails fence further back um, and having done that we have to do some ground investigations uh, to establish what the conditions are where our earth ramps up to the bridge will be and a few other locations as well um, where our structures are going in so you'll see a fence go up and you'll see a machine that looks a bit like that uh, perhaps a little bigger than that actually possibly about twice <laughs> the size of that that's a small one but it'll be a tract a uh, boring rig which will essentially scoop out a, a column of, of soil and the uh, underlying geology and tell us how strong it is. That's essentially what it's about. Uh, so you might see one of those. And then they have to report on that and, and tell us what it's like and then again that gives our contractor a chance to, to redesign or design what, what we're going to do in, in an appropriate fashion. So that's where we are up to now with phase one. And I thought I'd just take the opportunity now to uh, say something about phase two. Um, phase two is slightly different as far as there aren't so many uh, big structures involved. 
Um, and we're mercifully uh, on highway for a lot of it. When I say on highway, I don't mean on the road, I mean within the highway boundary, uh, which is something that, as the Highway Authority, we control anyway. Uh, so that makes matters quite a lot easier. Or we're on land that's owned by Network Rail, who, uh, credit to them, have been working with us very, very well and very positively. Um, we're on both sides of the tracks. Uh, and the other thing uh, I should say is that it's fortuitous that we're doing this now because there's two developments going on which we hope to take advantage of in this process. Uh, you've got the Ridgen development and you've got the City Depot development. Um, and just to say that anything that we do here, again, will have, there'll be a whole other round of consultation to make sure we're doing something that people want. You know, we've got our own ideas, but. Uh, and we've aired some of it already, but we don't really know what people think about it. I mean, this, this is phase two, that's Colton's Common, this is where we stop at phase one there. We've got two, I mean, they're not options really, they are two routes we hope to develop. Uh, this is Cromwell Road, that's the Ridgeland development there. This is Frampton Road, which is a road, uh, but very, very suitable for cycling, very, very quiet indeed. Uh, and makes a very useful link to the, to the Chisholm Trail here. This area, I don't know if folk remember, you know, the Chisholm Trail, we had wanted to go down here close to the railway. That isn't, those opportunities have been closed down. They no longer exist because it's been built on. You know, tricks have been missed in the past. So we're, we're kind of forced into doing this. Uh, but in a way, it's not bad because that's where people live. You know? So it connects more people to the park. So that's kind of... Um, an unintended consequence is it's, it's really, really quite good in many ways. So, Cromwell Road, Brampton Road, Bridgens, and here we enter Network Rails land and use uh, an unused arch in Mill Road Bridge uh, and take it to the Carter Bridge at this point here, that's the Carter Bridge there. Also, we can go over the existing um, bridge over the railway Colvin's Lane and come in through uh, the B, does they call it the Beehive Centre? Yes. Yeah, <coughs> through the Beehive Centre, widen the path, and then again we'd be on road here uh, as far as the city depot site here, which I say is being redeveloped, and as part of that redevelopment, land will be reserved for the Chisholm Trail and will take us through another arch on this side here. So we avoid that nasty accident spot at the base of uh, Mill Road Bridge, which many folk will have uh, encountered uh, and near misses on, no doubt. Uh, and take us into Cambridge North Station and further on to the south. Uh, I'll briefly show some of the elements. This is, um, this is actually, where are we? That's here, at that point there, where you come off the road into uh, network rails land that um, where are we? this is a depot here in here this area that's the Chisholm Trail going down network rails track at that point and you can see it here that's the track we're here on Mill Road Bridge looking north it, it goes down here this is backs of houses this is obviously railway land these are temporary buildings which may be relocated to the, the depot site that we saw on the previous slide uh, another shot of that, um, just to show there's plenty of, this is where we have to go. There's plenty of room in here. Um, we're not sure exactly what Network Rail, in fact Network Rail aren't sure what they want to do here. Um, we're told there's an issue around stabling of uh, new 12 car trains. They want to use the sidings and they may end up building uh, sidings on part of this. Um, or they need access to uh, the sidings across here. They may have to lay some track. They may even have to use one of the arches, but there's two we can use, so we're okay. Uh, and, but we can bottom that out with a meeting we're about to have with them. So no, I was ask a question. I mean, <clears throat> are we absolutely clear um, and have a on that well that throughout, through, from the first bit to the last of this, uh, when we're going through, uh, to the, to the track, 
that it's going to be of the requisite length. Sorry, width. Um, it will be what they can give us. Not two metres. No, at the moment they use it as a track for vehicles, and it's about over four metres wide. Okay. Yeah, and it necks down in one or two places, and we so may need to make some yeah. adjustments. It will be wide enough for what we want, but it will still be used by them. But their, their vehicular use is quite infrequent, and it may be that um, you know, there will be network rail vehicles using it from time to time. But it may be that they completely change the way it operates altogether, and they so, don't have any need for it. So we don't know is the, is the answer okay. to that question. So you say it's still, so even if it comes a constitute part of the Chisholm Trail, it may be still used by network rail vehicles. Yeah. It's theirs. Yeah. They can do what they like with it. That's so I'm going to give it to us. <coughs> so that'd be quite like quite quite a lot of cycleways in the Netherlands that are still access tracks for maintenance uh, or or for, for service vehicles. That, you know, that's not it, that's it not an uncommon. Yeah, as long as it's very low traffic, that's very not likely. Good. Okay. Yeah. It's just like busway, isn't it? In that sense. Yeah, the maintenance. It is the maintenance track. But yeah. you're right. It's, yeah, it's a good analogy. Actually. Um, again, this is nowhere looking south, and that's the, the area of land uh, that we're, we're looking to use uh, adjacent to the railway. There'll have to be some fencing, and I've previously shown slides, which I don't propose to show again, how that might work um, with, with a fence. And it does, there is a point where it does narrow here, but it's still over three and a half metres, 3.7, I think, of usable width at that point. Um, that's Carter Bridge looking south towards Cambridge Station here. This is, um, this is the train wash here, if anyone knows it. There's, a, there's an old um, road uh, which belonged to the developer here, which we could get hold of uh, and could, could, could form our link. Um, because again, that's been preserved. There's another view of saying that's, that's now on rails access to the train wash, but this here is uh, a road that's currently not used. Um, I think it belongs to lands, actually, but it, 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 it can't be developed because it was reserved during the planning process. Um, the other side, um, we're looking north now from the station car park towards the city depot and Ridgeland and Mill Road, if you can imagine that. Um, this is the driver or staff car park for Nemo Rail folk. And now the route will go through here. Uh, again, this is Bill Overridge looking south. Um, this is where we intend to go, but this somewhere down here would be the arch that we intend to use. There's a, I've got another uh, slide of that, which is there. Uh, that's the arch. I don't know who that is. But it's nice and blurred, whoever it is. So, uh, Trespassing on the railway. Um, I mean, that shows the dimensions here and how we will have to fence it off from the, the line railway. And that emerges uh, again into the city depot. This city depot site is there. These are just old wee bins uh, they store stuff in. And the proposals I've seen for the city development, we'll be talking to them and that strip in there is reserved because I think they actually can't build them even if they wanted to. Uh, so our route will go through there in one way or another and we're talking to our city colleagues at the moment about that. And then it, I suppose you know it's about anything else and there are one or two other intriguing possibilities at the moment which uh, I said something about um, it being fortuitous that there are other developments going on and it's possible that we will be able to build, or well, it is possible to build, uh, a new uh, crossing over the railway, um, which has been, well, we're told, was something that came up in the, the bridge in consultation and proved to be very popular. People said, actually, we want a bridge, you know, a crossing of the railway. Um, so we sort of looked into this and we came up with a number of sort of solutions by our own sort of thought processes. Um, and there are several options uh, which you know, we could sort of invoke, but at the moment it, it, it's, it's about timeliness because you've got the region's development and you've got the city council development, and that opportunity will never ever exist again. Well, okay, 
moving on in the next 150 years or some such. So here's an opportunity possibly for putting a link between the two. And it is possible, and it's a <coughs> fabulous link. Um, and we're in discussion with City Council and with Ridgens um, to sort of think about how we might, might do that. We've got to get our skates on because these developments are going to happen before you know where you are. Um, so what we've done is we're, 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 um, we're looking at the feasibility of this now. So we've commissioned some to look at what we could do in terms of a rail crossing. Without, we've given them a sort of blank canvas. We've said, you know, we have our own ideas about where we might like to cross and what we think is good. We've said, look at all options. Uh, look at every crossing point and examine the merits and demerits of these. Now, there are several locations it could go. I know one where I think it would be a good place to cross, but there are others. I mean, you could do work to Mill Road Bridge to widen it or put something parallel to Mill Road Bridge if that, you know, and people will look at that. You could um, do a cut and cover tunnel beneath the railway, uh, and we've asked them to look at that. We've asked them to look at everything, essentially, and they're going to come back, uh, and hopefully by the time. Uh, the next LMF is here, we'll have something to show you on that. Um, I very much hope so, because it would be too late if it isn't really, actually. <laughs> the houses would be flying up if you're not careful. And that's pretty much all I've got to show you at the moment. So, if there are questions for me, then I'm happy to try and answer them. Yeah. Right, so, so back to the design of the bridge, um, Which? the um, bridge over River Cam. Yeah. Um, so when you went through the planning, um, I thought there were some designs which showed that there was going to be no grass riverbank left, and some um, showed that we were, were going to keep some grass riverbank. Are we going to keep uh, the grass? Think... Are we going to keep the grass riverbank, or will the path be widened up to the point of um, the edge of the river? I think it's going to be hard right up to the river because I don't think the um, there's any. Certainly underneath the bridge, no grass will grow anyway, and it doesn't. Uh, and in fact, it's concrete, I believe, because I think that's only to do with it being concrete. Uh, every inch is valuable, but clearly the last half metre, you don't want people cycling there anyway. So, um, my view is it, it will be hard. Okay, I think that's quite a shame, because I think that, that, that really impacts the, the view of the river and the, the grass bank. I think immediately underneath the bridges, no grass will grow. Um, and on the, the ramp as it comes around then, um, on the um, safety in the winter, what are your latest thoughts on that in terms of either some electric heating or some surfacing to um, prevent... We, we're going tripping. to look, we'll look at that, but I, I strongly suspect electrical heating is something which will prove to be very expensive and not necessarily terribly effective. So is that something you're discussing with the contractors at this It, this it will be something we will discuss with the contractors, but it, it, it will be expensive, and it will be expensive to run. Um, but it will, whatever happens, there will be, the route will be gritted. Um, so arguably that's, that's as good or better. We were told last time that that would be a challenge next to the river. Um, with the gritting solution or the de icing solutions that, that are being used. Just, on, be on the, just lastly, on the broader point, of, uh, will there be a safety audit which will capture all these things and also things like the um, signage? Yeah, everything we do is safety auditing. At, at what stage yeah. though? Will it be at the appropriate Throughout, stage? Throughout. Uh, yeah, and, and at the end. Um, and people will no doubt tell us that we perhaps need a railing there. And I think that mm. isn't an option either because uh, you've got racing of boats through there and all sorts of things where all walls go up on the bank and there are all sorts of conflicts and we're talking to the Conservatives of the camp about what we're going to do down there and I wouldn't like to prejudge uh, exactly what It would be good to, to see the safety audit as it is yeah. next time so that we can see the balance okay. being made on these points. Take that away. Anybody else? Any questions? So I have one question about the tunnel. Um, the tunnel under the New Market Road. Okay. Um, last time I heard it uh, being discussed, you were suggesting that it would be over a long weekend, you yes. know, bank holding weekend, close yeah. the road, do the tunnel, put it back on. My question is, when are we going to see the time lapse for that? <laughs> I, I, I want, if, if you guys go do that, I will, I will prepare the equipment, stick it on a pole, and do the time lapse. I'm for sure it. because that's really very anxious to that. <laughs> Video. Yeah, yeah I, I want a live web feed as well. 
that, I mean, that is the, that's still the way we're going to go with that. Um, and so our discussions with them is that they agree that that's the most sensible way to do it, and it is doable. So they're very happy with that decision, and that's where we, that's the way we're going. And, and will tickets be sold to <laughs> free? Free, excellent. <laughs> Yeah, just one quick, well, two questions actually. One is around the, if there is a crossing at Cobham's Lane, the bottom of the bridge there, yeah. where you come out of the, uh, where the common comes out, yes. is there thought process around doing a bridge at the Cobham's Lane or a tunnel there or some sort of safety on that roundabout? Because it's quite a tricky, roundabout. or a junction rather, it's quite a tricky three way junction already. We are, again, that's something we want to tackle because the crossing that we have there is clunky, slow, not safe. People do stupid things there because it takes such a long time. And we think there are improvements that can be made. We had thought that we could remove that um, loop. Um, so this is, there's a loop in there for lorries to double back and go into Colden Road. And that's why the phasing is the way it is because you have to include a green for both directions. Um, so a lorry can do it. And I don't, I, I, we had thought that um, there may be a way of getting rid of that and taking traffic down lorry traffic, the, the infrequent lorry traffic, down to the Colmes Sainsbury roundabout and send them around that, which would mean it would free up more green time for the crossing. But I'm told there are reasons why that can't happen. I'm struggling to remember what they are now. Um, but we are looking at improvements to that. We could certainly narrow it down. We could certainly make some improvements to the timings. But it may be that we should be looking, in addition to that, to another crossing that would take both to Brampton Road. So um, that's that possible. possible. Yeah. Brampton, yeah. Because there's a nice wide highway. We're not straying onto the common, because that's another thing <laughs> that people have said. But there's actually a very nice uh, wide piece of. Uh, verge and existing path, which we could make something that would be acceptable to get to, to that point. And it may be that that's the way to go, but we're not sure yet what the best approach is. Mm. I'll take your point, though, it's, it's not good. Yeah. It's, it's not ideal, really. I mean, the other thing is just a comment on the beehive. It's currently very, very unsafe for children and anybody who's unstable to try and cycle through. I know that you can go around and there is a cycle path, but the junction at the Beehive Roundabout is quite tricky if you're unstable on a bike and going through the car park is... There have been some initial discussions with the owners of that site and they're very keen to see improvements made. Okay. We haven't designed it yet, yeah. uh, but we'll look at that. Um, there's a bit on the back on the, the underpass and the idea of doing it in a weekend. Looking at the officers' report for the planning meeting next week, planning officers' report, they're does seem to be a condition about doing work only during, I think, basically uh, limited hours, so not overnight and uh, things. Is is that a problem for doing the... Uh, the it will be if we, yeah. if we try to compress everything into a weekend, so I mean, we'll have to do some thinking yeah. around that. Uh, it, it's, yeah, I think <coughs> it's down, down as a recommended we'll condition. Shot for this, uh, <coughs> but in a residential area. Yeah. So there will presumably be conditions about the hours of construction. Yeah, yeah, yeah will be. But, but, yeah, but you'll be able to work around or work with that. Well, and, to do it, I yeah. mean, you can't do stuff without yeah. doing some of these things. And for that period, there will be some disruption. Yeah. Okay. Presumably, um, we'll offset the doing it in a short time period with disruption between the night. Yeah, yeah. Doing but, but, but it's taking a bit more disruption. The, yeah. the, the, the condition won't be completely yeah. binding. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a condition that wouldn't be completely binding, and we, yeah. you would be able to get special permission for it. For the stop single we'll weekend. Have to do that, yeah. Yeah, just, just understand how that works. Uh, Anybody else? Um, so I'm just curious Motorbikes can, yeah. um, and to be honest with you, I, I, I strongly, you know, it will continue to be a problem insofar as if motorbikes can get on, they will, 
if it's not enforced. So there's a whole other issue around enforcement there, uh, and it may come. You know, there is there is no easy solution or good solution to this, but the solution certainly isn't to have a narrow path because then you've got a motorbike on a narrow path. I mean, at the moment you have motorbikes, and it's not. I agree, it's not good. Um, Widen the path. I don't know that it actually makes it worse. Um, it doesn't solve the problem we're talking about. That's true. The, 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 the problem would be solved by enforcement, and that's that's all that I can offer. Is it going to end up being a new road bridge across the river? A new road bridge across the river. <laughs> no, so absolutely. Across I, I mean, that's not happening. No, 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 no. What do you mean by by? I sort of sneakily make a new road, is that what you're saying? Is that what you're... No, 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 just to really um, accessible to motorbikes to whiz across. I mean, the river's the river's road bridge is, is, is technically accessible to motorbikes, and there's no issue that I'm aware of. I don't know one case where someone went over on a quad. Mm -hmm. That's once in... We take a quad over the salt to me, I think. I'll report you then. <laughs> but no, I... I guess most bikes is a separate thing, and then <coughs> this won't stop them. What will stop them will be greater enforcement. Mm -hmm. Most bikes are current, current has always been a problem. Right. <laughs> 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 Some months, so I don't think it's going to. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I think it's less of a problem now because these are powers to empower them and crush them. Yeah. Well, it's quite a strong. Only if they're uninsured. No, no, no. They'll be heavier than an antisocial man. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Crush, yes, yes. No, no. <laughs> they do, after, after a warning. Yeah, after a warning. Yeah. Like, a second offence, I think. They can issue a thing if they're caught again, they can contest. I thought they used to be only if they were insured. Yeah. So, yeah. Are there any other questions from no, John? Sure. I'm sure the main concern for motorbikes is that there'll be lots of other people using it, and it's, it's not fun to yeah. so yeah. weave them out slowly, and lots, lots of people inside them. But as you say, there's not a problem with the need to other existing bridges that have been built for that So I was reading the plan application for the Chisholm Trail Pass on Colden's Common, right. and there's one objection that they're not um, bridleways, so they're not um, from um, horse riders. Um, and the response or comment is that they're going to be footpaths. So will it be legally so permissible already. to right. will it be legally permissible to cycle on the new Chisholm Trail on Colden's Common and um, on Ditton Meadows approaching the new bridge? It, I mean, it is a, it's legally possible now to do so. And nothing will change. It is, is it? It's a, to, to cycle on Colton's Common and Ditton Meadows, it, it's, it, because it's a footpath, your rights are as a, uh, a person on foot, but there are additional rights which I, I suspect uh, have been gained over time to cycle over it. And on land owned by the City Council, as in the case of Colton's Common, that, they allow that as permissive rights anyway. So that's what you have in uh, Midsummer Common, for example, and all the other places. Do we? Is, there, is, is there, are you telling me there's some document somewhere that says that we're permitted to cycle on Midsummer Common? Probably not. I no. So in this case, then, we're having some new paths. Can we get that clarification when you put the new paths in? That's something I think we should explore. Excellent. Thank um, you. Yeah. Right, if there are no more questions, let me just say uh, thank you very much to Patrick for the presentation and uh, thank you for all coming. So what did we learn from the meeting? Well, I think the biggest bit of news was probably that there's going to be consideration given to widening Mill Road Bridge as part of the next phase of the Chisholm Trail Works. Uh, that was something I hadn't heard about before, and it's certainly um, potentially be um, quite significant in um, making crossing Mill Road Bridge by bike um, safer, because currently one of the um, major uh, accident black spots in the city is at the foot of a Mill Road Bridge by Devonshire Road. Something I asked about was um, the state of this riverbank opposite here and if we're going to maintain um, the green grass on the edge of the river there. Unfortunately I was told by the officer um, that uh, no, the chances are, or it's uh, currently in the plan to um, get rid of that um, grass bank um, next to the river. Which I think is a, a significant loss. He also said that um, there will be objections to having a railing. Um, because um, rowing crews sometimes want to put their blades up on the bank 
Um, obviously that's a consideration. Um, but what I've asked for is um, for the safety audit, which we've been told is a continuous process. Uh, so we've been told that um, there's a safety audit going on, so, but all the steps of this process. If next time we have one of these City Deal um, Greater Cambridge Partnership meetings, forum meetings, if we could have the latest safety audit information so we can see um, the balances that are being made, for example, between um, safety of people coming down um, the ramp from the new bridge here, um, so people don't um, fall into the river if it's icy or if they just lose control, um, versus um, the interests of rowers. And, and, and safety audit should also cover things like um, the signage on the um, adjacent roads and, and all sorts of other aspects. So it'd be an interesting document to have um, at the next meeting. And this, of course, is the um, pathway which is going to be widened. So currently um, it's pretty difficult um, if there are two oncoming cyclists um, to get around each other. You have to go very slowly and uh, um, make sure the space.